According to the dictionary, an election is a time when people vote in order to choose someone for a political job. That definition doesn't quite capture it. We go through this political ritual on regular cycles. Each time, the people who want the government jobs make a lot of promises. But then when they're in office, the only way things ever change is that everything gets worse. More war, more economic problems, and more lies. It's probably also fair to think of elections as a psychological exercise. Catharsis is the process of emotional release. One way to think of this is as blowing off steam. Studies have shown that strong emotions, such as the stress of life, can impede human vitality so that it's healthy to find a way to let go of them. This can be achieved in a variety of ways, such as by creating art, exercising, and doing things you enjoy. It seems that elections are a catharsis. People get agitated by political disputes, and every few years they get to exercise their vote. They get all worked up and then file a piece of paper with their preferences, and then the release is complete. Looking back, can it be that it was all so simple then? Or has time rewritten every line? If we had the chance to do it again, tell me, would we? Could we? The biggest memory of this election has to be that Trump was shot in the head and nearly killed. The photographer who took this picture should get a Pulitzer Prize. We will never forget that Haitians are eating cats in Ohio. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. We will never forget how Biden could no longer hide his cognitive decline. There are 40 percent fewer people coming across the border illegally. That's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we can do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump. I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. The board, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. We probably won't forget that Biden broke up with the American people by tweet. Of course, this was not without controversy. For example, a comparison of his signature on his highly unusual letter with his true signature is just one line in the conspiracy theories concerning an obvious coup against the government by the shadow networks. 2024 is also the year the Democrats kicked the Kennedy out of their party, and he joined up with the pro-America movement, which is where a Kennedy belongs when you think about it. Hopefully we will forget about how incredibly and horribly fake Gay Mala is. But in times of uncertainty, scripture reminds us weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. The path may seem hard, the work may seem heavy, but joy cometh in the morning. And church morning is on its way. But we must not forget that the Democrats see everyone else as Nazis. Understand exactly what is going on. He's going to have a rally tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden that is going to mimic a Nazi rally of 20 February 1939. And you know what the media is going to do? Say, well, he had a, a rally that mimicked Nazis and Kamala Harris was in Tucson and had 12,000 people for a rally. It's not the same thing. Or as garbage. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization of Latinos is unconscionable and it's un-American. It's totally contrary to everything we've done, everything we've been. With the election day or election week or election month upon us, we can look forward to even more hatred, hostility, and hard feelings. Um, section three of the 14th amendment given to us by the great Republicans of the 19th century in 1868 says 
that no one who swears an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution and violates that oath by engaging in insurrection or rebellion shall ever be allowed to hold federal or state office again. The language is perfectly clear. It's totally unambiguous. And so we're going to hear from the Supreme Court, I hope, that they are real originalists, they are real textualists, they accept the language of the Constitution as is written, 